first thing I want to say is you can do this. You don't need to spend five, six, seven hundred dollars, whatever it takes at the dealer to get your 200 hour service done on your small tractor. I'm going to show you all there is to it, including some of the challenges. Let's get started. Many of you have seen our Johnny's Essential Oils series. If you haven't and you have a little 1025R, well, that's a good series to watch. And this video is actually a replacement for the hydraulic oil change. I reviewed that video again this week and I realized that some facts have changed and some of it is just we've improved our ability to make videos. Uh, our audio is a lot better and hopefully we can get some better views and, and just do a better job of, of showing you how to get this project completed. Now from the facts standpoint, uh, when that video was shot, the 1025R had a 50 hour service requirement in the manual. It no longer has that. You're to do the hydraulic oil change starting at 200 hours. Now, I don't have 200 hours yet on this 1025R. I'm choosing it to do it at about 115 hours, 115. And the reason is the 50 hour services that I've done in the past have shown a lot of steel fragments uh, next to the magnet in the, in the transmission housing and I just want to get those out of there. Second reason is I'm going to be doing some temperature tests on this particular system and I just want to make sure that it's clean when we're doing that testing. Here's what you're going to need to change the hydraulic oil in your 1025R. You're going to need a very large pail. I had to search for this one. Now it's probably available everywhere, but this it's got to hold at least four gallons. It's available on our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. Uh, it wasn't much money when I got mine, but that was six years ago. It seems like forever from the standpoint of inflation. Um, but it's still there on our Amazon store. You're going to need a funnel when it comes time to fill. You're going to need a magnet to get the, uh, ma the fragments out, the steel fragments out. You're going to need a filter wrench and don't get a junk one like this. Um, a, a decent filter wrench. The problem is that a typical filter wrench that you would see for a car is too big of a diameter for the small filter that, that you have to get around. So you have to find a small filter wrench and they're not necessarily easy to find. Don't use this. Bad choice. You're going to need a 13 millimeter uh, wrench or socket. It'll have to have a pretty long handle because it is tight on every one of these tractors. You'll need Nipex pliers. Do you ever know that I, I like these Nipex pliers? Yeah, you'll need some good pliers and you'll need a lot of patience for the steps that require the pliers. This is, this is not easy getting, uh, getting this rubber hose and these pipe clamps removed. You'll likely need a flathead screwdriver to help you make that work. You'll need at least four gallons of low vis high guard. Low vis is required. I don't even want to get into why low vis is required because I don't really know. I just know that on the 1025R, the manual and the tractor itself says use low vis high guard. You'll need at least four gallons. As I said, I would go ahead and get either a five gallon pail or five individual gallons because you'll sometimes have some hydraulic oil spillage. It's nice to have a little extra around. One other thing you'll need for this project is shop towels because very likely will make a mess. Okay, let's dig in. I'm doing this project on our lift so that we can get a little bit better video. But the first thing we start with is to take out this drain plug right here, okay? You're gonna be doing this uh, on, the, on the floor. I would suggest that you actually uh, use some, some four by fours or six by sixes to raise the tractor up off the ground. Just drive up on them before you start this and that'll give you a little extra room. Then you'll be able to slide your large oil container under here. Because of the backhoe subframe, that large oil container won't fit uh, when you're just on the floor. Now I've made myself a kind of a nifty little, check this out, put a hole right in the middle of this here uh, paint. It's a, just a, a throwaway paint container and I'm able to set it right here in the turf rail. Maybe I should talk a little bit more about the turf rail as we go here, but I try to hold this drain plug upward so that no oil comes out till I'm ready. And yes, I could 
loosen it a lot faster if I weren't trying to hold it up so tight, but I'm just that's a that's a way for me to avoid getting drenched. There we go. There's a little washer on the top of the drain plug here that helps it seal. Okay, I'll take this out. It's a good time for one of those shop towels. Now it'll drain faster if you'll open up the plug at the top to allow air in, and that's why you're hearing it burping here. But it's a little hard for me to reach that plug, so it's just going to be what it's going to be for this part. I'm using a Gravity Flow oil drain container here. So you let the oil go into it with gravity, but then when we want to empty this oil container, we use air pressure to empty it. I got it from my friends at iaequip.com, and that's where you can get your stuff too. They don't really have an e-commerce type uh, sales approach because uh, they said there's just so many options and they want to really help their customers get get exactly what they need. It's the same company that makes this turf rail. They also sell the Challenger lifts and we've been customers of theirs now for a long time. They're, they're just wonderful people to deal with and so um, I would encourage you to reach, a, reach out to them. IAEquip.com. Now there is a discount on the turf rail if you, if you get it. I don't remember what the discount amount is but you mentioned Tractor Time with Tim. Um, it'll fit on any of the major lift manufacturers' products. Um, this is a Challenger lift, but it'll, it'll work on the other brands as well. Again, contact the folks at iaequip.com for more information. Now we're under the middle of the tractor. I've lowered the auto connect mechanism as far down as it will go. The easiest way for me to deal with this is to unhook this BTO shaft. It's easy when you're right here. It might not be so easy. Uh, from another angle, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get the best camera view possible. Now, I'm expecting to have all kinds of difficulty. I don't know that I've ever used this filter wrench successfully. Deer offered a little filter wrench that worked beautifully on the engine oil filter, but it doesn't work on this one because the filter is totally round. And I absolutely hate this filter wrench and don't think it will work. I think I'll just break it, but it might. I have found the original deer filter to be always very tight on these machines. Doing pretty well. It broke it. Okay, so much for that filter wrench. We had to make a run and find something new. I told you it wasn't any good. I'm glad I broke it so I never have to worry about it again. So I chose this style because it looked like it would have uh, the most flexibility with these smaller filters. It's basically a big pair of pliers. So we're going to try it. Uh, these filters are really tight when they come from the factory. And this one does allow me to slip right up in there around where I need to go. And let me see if I can pull it. <clears throat> there she goes. OK, once it gets going, it's not so bad. Now, it's pretty tight fit for this particular set. I don't know if I can find this set on Amazon. If so, I'll let you know. I may not need it now. I got it started. The cat, I think, wants to go out or something. He's freaking out. Yeah, he is. There, I can do it that way. Okay, I got it now. Here it comes. Should, should be some oil come out of it, yeah sat here for a good while, so there's really not going to be any issue there. It looks pretty good up there. I don't see any dirt. Now for the new filter, I'm just going to take just a little bit of oil. I got some oil on my finger and put right here on the O-ring. And I'm going to put it right up there. Put some oil in it. Too, which I don't know if I needed to do. I don't really think that's a big deal, but okay. Now, let's not put this one on too tight. So as I'm cranking this filter on here, um, the instructions always say on a filter to do it a half to three quarters of a turn after the gasket contacts the base. 
And that is not a half to three quarters of a turn after it's hand tight. <laughs> and that's how you get them on too tight, right? So if I take it back off here a little bit, you see the gasket's not touching. And then we, we felt it touch right there. Okay, it got just a little bit harder. Now I'm going to turn this a half a turn after that. Right there. That's a half a turn after that. I may go just a little bit more just to ensure that I've got enough. I'll take my towel and wipe that. See, we shouldn't have any leaks at that. There's really no point, because it's a rubber gasket there, there's really no point of that being incredibly tight. It's just gonna make it harder for you next time, right? It just has to be tight enough not to leak. So we're done with the filter. Let's put this auto connect back on. Rotate it over. And that goes right on there. Now I'm choosing to remove my heavy hitch two inch receiver not because I need to for this project, but rather because I think it'll make it easier for you to see. If you do have difficulty with these clamps, you can remove your drawbar, whether it's the standard plate or whether it is the heavy hitch two inch receiver. That's uh, entirely up to you. Slide my oil tray over here. I need something that'll, that'll span that whole clamp there. And that's why I, I tease, but the Nipex really do seem to be the, the right answer for this. They allow you to span that whole width. I'll go from the bottom here to see this one. Of course, it's much easier to take off than it is to put back on. But sometimes it's even a challenge to take off. And that's why I told you we might need a screwdriver. So we typically, I'll rotate it around here a little bit so that you can see how I use the screwdriver. If I can get it grabbed just right and pinched with your pliers, and then hopefully you've got a little bit freed, you can pry up with the screwdriver side as while you're pushing up with the other side. At least that's the way it's worked for me in the past. I may need to pinch it a little more. I'll tighten my Nipex down one or two more notches. That allows me to pinch it a little bit tighter. Here we go. Looks like it's moving now. It just doesn't go easily. And so if you think it's hard going off, it's going to be worse going back on. I think while I'm here, I'm going to wipe some of that grime off of that. I've got both these clamps kind of pinched up here some way against themselves and against a, another bolt over here. And now I'm going to try to get that hose to go upward. So again, it's a screwdriver job. It's not easy, but it's going upward. There she goes. It takes a lot of a lot of my strength in my old age to do that. Okay, and we can see as soon as we got above the O-ring there. That might be getting about far enough. Otherwise we're gonna have trouble getting the clamps up much further. Yeah, that'll probably do it. So much for my complete list of tools at the beginning. Um, I do need a six millimeter Allen wrench. And I choose to use one here that's got, uh, that's got a 3 8 socket adapter. And I use a short extension on my 3 8 socket to, to get to this. This is the easiest way. Now, if you have trouble getting your entire socket wrench in there, this will also work with a six millimeter wrench or a quarter inch wrench. Um, put on top of this and you can turn it that way. Let me, let me show you that trick. The way my Allen wrench is made, it's six millimeter for just a little bit and then this is actually a, a quarter inch hex here. So I got a quarter inch, in fact I got a gear wrench and I could slide on that like that. So if you can't get the entire socket, uh, the ratchet and everything on, you can use just the socket 
and slide your quarter inch wrench on there to help you turn it. Just a nice little trick. But in this case, I believe I can get the socket in there. The entire extension, the ratchet, and everything we need. Need to make sure you get that Allen wrench fully inserted. Okay? And the reason is I do not want to strip out that, that Allen head. I'm putting a lot on it. I just, sometimes I don't understand why things are, are tightened so tightly, but I guess we don't want them to come loose. But I really feel like I have to put a lot on a little six millimeter Allen head to get that thing to break loose. It's not coming out easily. It's given, given me some resistance the entire way out here. Okay, here it is. Long, long-winded, as my dad would say. It's a long bolt. Now we need to just pry this away. I don't really like how grimy that is. Maybe I'll get a towel in there. Get as much of that grime out of there as I can before we get started. And it won't be perfect. Hey, okay, that's what filters are for, right? Now we just do our best on this kind of thing, and uh, you know that's about all we can do. Look at that grime I'm able to push around there. Get that, get that out of here. Okay, I'm just going to pry with my screwdriver and it should come out pretty easily. I have to work it a little bit to get it out of the top of the hose here that I couldn't push up any further. Okay, here we go. And what do you know, the magnet didn't come out with it. It's not a big deal. Stick my finger in and here it comes. And that's what they look like. It's about 115 hours, maybe 116. And that's all shavings and steel shavings. Now they're, they're the actual magnets inside. I'll get it out here in a second. I'm just gonna take a towel. I don't really wanna force that stuff in there, but I I'll try to wipe it off without being too forceful. I don't know if there's another way to get it out of that screen or not. Now the magnet is right inside the filter there. And that's what it looks like. I just broke it. Okay, that's what a broken magnet looks like. I just dropped it and it easily breaks. Now we know that. It's interesting, after the magnet breaks there, it, uh, doesn't, it doesn't want to go back together. They're, they're opposites. Well, I probably should replace that, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna put both pieces that I have left after I wipe them a little bit right back in there. Now this is a step that I've added. It's actually not in the manual, but I like to run a magnet through and get some extra shavings out. I feel like, yeah, there were a lot of shavings that actually stuck to the magnet, but there's a bunch more that seem to be at the bottom of this cavity here, the bottom of the reservoir, and I, I just want to get as many of those out as I can while I'm in here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, some of those are a little more significant in size than I would like to see. And that brings up a good point. If you see large chunks of stuff, like quarter inch, half inch, uh, chunks of steel in there, you got a real problem, okay? Uh, shavings is one thing, uh, but, but uh, a large chunks of, of steel or other material. Now, there is some white material sometimes, a rubber gasket material in here, that's not a problem. They say in the newer machines, you don't see that as much, but in the older machines, during manufacturing, there was some white uh, some sort of a silicone glue or something. I think it was part of the gasket material here, actually, that was coming out on the inside 
it wasn't hurting them, but it was, you know, people were a little put off by seeing that material come out uh, when they would do this. But I go in there and reach as far as I can reach in every angle. This may just be a feel-good thing. Maybe it doesn't matter. But I, I really want all that out I can get. For one thing, I want this screen to, to allow as much oil through it as possible, especially since I've got the Hydros Plus pump on it. Okay, I'm not getting as much now. As I'm showing here, there's no point in taking the rear tire off. That really doesn't make anything any easier. I'm not getting much now, so I, I must have most of it out. That's a good sign if you fished all day and we're still getting more than it would seem kind of hopeless and endless. But this is cast aluminum, so it's not going to to stick to that. It's only it's the steel's going to want to find its way to my magnet. Okay. I think I'll call that good. There's an O-ring in there. I'm not replacing either of these two O-rings, and maybe I should, but I'm not going to. In fact, I never have. So I've not had any problem with leakage like that. I'll go right back in here. I'll use the same direction that we came out, tilted this way. Turn it upward like that. I'll slide it on in. Try to get this lined up. I suppose this step would be marginally easier if you had to wheel off. You could use an impact. But I'm not sure I want to use an impact here anyway. You know, I'm going into that aluminum housing. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, it's pretty good. Just a little patience sometimes is uh, the best approach. Taking the rear wheel off is, uh, is not a problem at all if, if you uh, don't have any fluid in or wheel weights on, but I have wheel weights and fluid in the tires and that just makes that kind of a, a, a job, right? Uh, the tire's somewhat heavy once you do get the uh, wheel weight off, but even getting the wheel weight off, that's, a, you know, that's yet another challenge on its own. Okay, I remember this was pretty tight, so I think that's about all I want to do. Now remember I said you needed patience. Well this is the step where you need patience. It will not necessarily go easily. Um, it's, it's just a pain to get this, to get not only the hose back down, but, but more than that, the clamps. Okay, well the hose went right down once I I grabbed it, I put the screwdriver beside it, and I grabbed it with my fingers like that, and I have this place right here to, for some leverage, so the hose went right down. That's not a problem. This may be a problem. Okay. Here we go. I've grabbed, I'm going to grab it from underneath. I may have my pliers too far apart. I don't think I've got it wide enough. Okay, that's as wide as it goes. Now here we go. Usually I, I slip off of that about 18 times while I'm pushing this down. Maybe I'll get it the very first time here and I'll look like a genius. Uh, but uh, that looking like a genius doesn't usually happen for me, especially on a project like this. But getting that to go downward is not easy. I may try to grab this tab a little bit and see if I can bend it so it'll allow it to expand a little further. Now several folks have told me that they uh, abandon this particular pipe clamp and just put a traditional one on, which is entirely fair. It should work. It should work better. Uh, at least just as good, right? As long as it doesn't leak, it's working fine. So if you have an enormous amount of struggle with this, you can replace it with a pipe clamp, a regular screw down pipe clamp. Here we go. I finally got it loose enough, got it uh, pried far enough apart, right? That was what I had to do was to get it pried open enough here with my 
Nipex pliers and then it would slide down. So that's the trick is to get it pried open as far as it will go such that it can actually be slid far enough to get it down. Now, sometimes it takes two steps here. It's really wide right now. My little pliers won't be able to get this fully down. I don't know if I can get it. Oh, look at that. Right down there just fine. Like it was meant to be. The hard part is finished. You may need to double check this to make sure there's not a leak. Um, I have had uh, some times where I didn't think I got this down perfect and it would leak a little bit, but usually I don't have a problem there, but it is something to double check during your, your testing phase. One more thing that we better do while we're down here. Now you don't have to do this from the front. Uh, you, can, you can do it from the front or the rear, whichever is the closest for you. But we gotta put the drain plug back in. Otherwise it's not gonna have a fun ending, right? You're gonna dump four gallons of expensive oil out on your floor and that won't be pleasant. So here we go. Now this was pretty tight too, so I'm gonna give it a good bit. This thing's adjustable height, whatever height you want to use it. I don't know how many gallons it'll hold, but it'll hold more than the four I just put in it. So we won't pump it out tonight. We'll pump it out some other time. Okay, so this is the fill plug right here. Now I've taken a towel here before I, before I take this cap off, I've taken a towel and got all the grime and all that I can get away from there. And I've used a screwdriver to try to force the towel in there because it's really grimy, at least on mine. Um, so try to get as much of that away as I can. Now I've got it where I'm ready to take the cap off. It's a little risky to wipe it off after you've taken the plug out because you end up wiping the dirt down in the hole if you don't watch it. Still, that dirt bothers me, so I'm going to try to carefully wipe it out of there. Now, this is where you'll use your funnel, put it in, um, and dump your one-gallon cans in. Uh, if you're dumping by hand like that, the one-gallon cans have a big advantage. We actually have this oil pump, um, and so I'm going to use that. I've never used it before. But this one has uh, the ability to show me how many quarts it's, it's deployed. I'm going to do a review on this particular pump in a separate episode. I don't want to confuse this particular episode with it, so you can check it out. It's called a BOP, a battery operated pump. And that's right, it's a 20 volt or 18 volt, I think it's a 20 volt uh, lithium ion battery, five quarts. I think it said a little over a gallon per minute it'll it'll do. This device is from McNaught, and I will put a link to, in the description of where you can get it. And I realize this is pretty high end for most of you that are homeowner DIY types, but for some of you it may be a perfect solution. Use code TTWT at the link in the There's description. 12 quarts, that's three and a half or three gallons. We'll go to 14 at three and a half gallons and see where it shows up on the stick. Okay, we are at 14 quarts or three and a half gallons. And, oh, there is a spot on this pump where I can, where I can plug it back in. And that way it drains back into the pump. The dipstick is down here to the side, so it's not the same hole as the intake. Appears to have oil in it, appears to be full. So it's slightly over the full mark at 14 quarts. At least 14 quarts as measured by this tool. Slightly over the full mark, I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Let me put the plug in here. And with that, we're done. Like I said at the beginning, you can do this yourself. It's not worth paying big money to your dealer, especially if it's money that you don't have, to do this service. And don't put it off, go ahead and do it. It's not that difficult. At the beginning, I explained that you might have a big challenge with that hose, uh, where the, the suction hose, the intake hose into the pump. Uh, I didn't have much trouble with that on this particular try. I have had it other times. 
This time I had a lot of trouble with the filter. The filter was on so tight I had trouble getting it off and I had to resort to getting a different filter wrench. Of course you saw what I had, it was, it was a junker. Um, now I have a better one and, and that should help me in the future on that. But that, that filter is on very tight when it comes from the factory. Uh, so you may have some trouble there. But still, it's not that big of a deal. If you have a friend that can help you, that's even better, but I, I would not shy away from this project. It's not that difficult. I hope you found this helpful. Check out the rest of Johnny's essential oil videos. Um, you can see the other service items that need to be handled on a 200 hour base, basis. You can get your supplies for the 200 hour service from greenpartstore.com slash TTWT and use code TTWT for free shipping. Yeah, even on the big oil containers, you get free shipping. You can get the maintenance kit there that contains all the filters you need. You can get the oil there, anything else you need, actually any part for deer uh, product. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy.